And uh, we are back for another edition of the Where Should They Go From Here series, and we are talk taking, we are talking about the Sacramento Kings in this episode. And uh, they got a lot of flack for trading for or trading DeMarcus Cousins and the assets that they got back for him. And uh, where's their pick? Oh, yes, with the Bulls. I forgot about that. But the Kings aren't in, or no, the Kings have, or they have a, the Bulls pick that the Bulls own is top 10 protected to the Kings. Okay, yeah. So, there's that. The Kings have two picks in this upcoming draft unless their pick somehow lands, lands outside the top 10, which is unlikely unless three teams unless the Heat, Nuggets, Pistons, Hornets, unless three of these teams jump into the jump ahead of jump in front of them, which would be this Mavericks pick to the 76ers, which I mean I think it's actually going to the Mavericks. But uh, also this pick to the Kings, Hornets, Pistons, you know, any if any of these lottery picks that are ahead of the Kings jump into the top three if three of them jump into the top three then the pick goes to the bulls so with that the kings are most likely going to have their pick and uh, i don't know why i haven't been doing this but we're going to take a look at the calendar and take a look at what exactly happened so they beat the timberwolves right here this was a pretty good win the marcus cousins free gay both doing pretty well Marcus Cousins, pretty nice, had a very good season for the Kings while he was on the Kings, and uh, overall this team just, I mean they can, they have, they don't have a bad crop of players to start off with, like in terms of going with the rebuild, they don't have a bad crop of players to base their team off of, but the problem is that this is the Sacramento Kings that we're talking about, all right? This is the Sacramento Kings that we're talking about. Their salary cap situation is not horrible. They can let Aaron Aflalo walk if they please. And uh, also Anthony Tolliver if they please. And then the Galloway, Galloway and Gay probably won't be back. Maybe Galloway might, but Rudy Gay might not. So... If that happens, oops, I keep doing that. But if that happens, then I mean they don't get much of anything. They don't get anything, period, out of Rudy Gay, one of their assets, their one of their supposed assets. So I don't know. I, I don't know how things are gonna boil in Sacramento. But if you ask me where his split Galloway splits, yeah. So in the six games in April, he averaged 10 points and three assists, 11 points of three assists. He was pretty efficient too. In December, he was pretty good. He's pretty all right, actually. But none of these guys really strike you as franchise players. Tyreek Evans might be gone. He's a guy that is ball dominant. He's more ball dominant. And uh, I mean, According to 2K, he can knock down open shots, but he's a guy that you really would want attacking the baskets and being your playmaker, your ball handler. That's really what you want Tyreek Evans to do for you. You have Rudy Gay. He was he actually wasn't too bad this year. He hasn't been too bad. He's just not a guy that you want leading your team as your best player that's just basically what he actually improved from the three-point line this year also it's from the free throw line efficiency wasn't terrible he got more assists so Rudy Gay isn't a bad player but uh, Willie Colley Stein is going to need to play the center position he's gonna need to continue to play the center position and he's just going to need to be the defender because that's really what he was 
that's really what his calling card was it was his defense his versatility on defense and his ability to defend the interior he just has been playing he's been playing behind the marcus cousins and out of p out of position at the same time scala bca is a guy that has some upside he's gonna need to grow so they have guys that are more so a hit or miss type of prospects so they're just gonna need to draft wisely and the problem with that is that they're the kings so you don't know if they're gonna draft wisely or not more more than likely they won't draft wisely so if they do end up with their projected picks they're going to have this pick Talikina wouldn't be a bad grab Harry Giles possibly possibly Mark Kanan Mark Kanan out of Arizona seven foot that would be two twin towers and this guy is a good shooter and according to embrace the pace he's a pretty solid defender and he's a pretty solid rebounder so he could be a pretty good player for the Kings Terrence Ferguson shooter seems like a D and three guy according to embrace the pace Harry Giles he's pretty athletic he can rebound still pretty raw so he's one of the more hit or miss type of prospects in this draft but in an ideal scenario they jump into the top three with one of their picks or actually they jump into the top three with their with their pick because if if they jump into the top three with a pelicans pick then it's protected so if they jump into the top three with their pick and they get they might be able to land markel fultz lonzo ball but i doubt that happens maybe the nba gets smug on the kings and wants them to restart their draft pick and get lucky but they just made a lot of wrong moves so in terms of rebuild you want to try to retain the talent that you have so let's take a look at the picks that they own in the future real quick uh, let's see real quick so they have the first rounder in 2018 actually I feel like that went to the Bulls but I could be wrong they don't have their pick in 2019 because that one goes to the Sixers <laughs> and the uh, 2020 so they're going to need to spend their two draft picks if they have both of their draft picks and they're gonna need to spend them wisely they're gonna need to spend them wisely if they don't do this right which i mean it's the king so they might not do it right probably most likely won't do it right then they're gonna be set back even even further as a franchise because they won't even have demarcus cousins to bail them out and get some doves so i mean trading away demarcus cousins wasn't as bad of a trade as people say it is but they didn't win that trade i feel like they both won that trade between the pelicans but they didn't get the better end of that deal the thing is that the kings now are going to need to spend their draft picks wisely they're going to need this fresh start to redeem themselves and uh, i mean apparently playing four and five on defense and leaving one man back to cherry pick is a revolutionary style of play and apparently buddy healed is going to be stephen curry so i guess that could work out for the kings but they just need to if they want to redeem themselves and build this team back up like it once was in the early 2000s when it had chris weber and uh Peja stoyakovich and all those guys and then they're gonna need to start with this draft they're hopefully gonna have two draft picks because it potentially could go wrong for them but hopefully they'll have two draft picks Maybe you take, if you luck into Josh Jackson, absolutely take him. I mean, he will work out. Pretty good defender. Help out with your defense. So let's take a look at the defense real quick. Take a look at their team stats. In the middle of the pack, wasn't too bad, wasn't too bad. But offensively is where this team is lacking. 
So Josh Jackson will help you out on defense, but he's a guy that just he has a lot of upside and I have high hopes for Josh Jackson. If you get Jason Tatum, you get a guy that can put the ball in the basket and create his own shots working from the mid-range. I feel like he's better from the mid-range than Embrace the Pace gives him, but I guess you put the rankings lower to start off. And uh, if you have good team defense around Jason Tatum, then he'll be a pretty good defender. But you have to have good defenders around Jason Tatum, or at least solid. I mean, I guess good defenders around Jason Tatum to work out. But Jason Tatum could be a good draft pick if he falls to them. That could be a good guy to snag. Frank Talinkina out of Belgium, a playmaker and a defender, seems like a pure point guard create his own shot against average defenders and uh, apparently has a future NBA superstar written all over him get steals more so than let's actually take a look at his actual ratings here yeah, pretty seems like a pretty good defender pretty solid to start off so if they get to leaky now that wouldn't be so bad and then you get Harry Giles or Laurie Mark Mark Kinnan. Mark Kanan, that wouldn't be so bad either. Jonathan Isaac is more of a jack of all trades, master of none. Not too good. Not too good defensively, but he's really a jack of all trades type of guy. So getting one of those wouldn't be so bad either, but really you want to give Willie Cauley Stein an opportunity. Getting to Likina wouldn't be so bad. It would actually be a pretty good draft pick. Harry Giles or Laurie Mark Kanan wouldn't be bad either. He's more of a guy that can stretch the floor, space the floor. So they're going to need to start because also their coach isn't so bad. Let's actually take a look at that real quick. They have David Yeager and uh, his, defense, his coaching ratings actually went down this year. But pretty solid head coach in my opinion so the Kings just if they're gonna rebuild they're gonna need to start right now if they're gonna kick this rebuild off properly they're gonna need to start right now they're going to need to nail their draft picks and they're going to need to get some value from trades if they can so that's what I would do for the King if I were the Kings maybe accept Aaron Flalo's team option and try to get some value for him I mean I don't know who will entirely get that wait whoa, whoa, whoa. why is that just that's the Raiders that's the Raiders slogan not the Warriors but anyways that's gonna do it for this Kings edition of where should they go from here so next team will be the Dallas Mavericks so I'll see you then